Uh, I was on uh, the founding board. I was one of the founders of uh, the National Gay Task Force, uh, which only belatedly, by the way, renamed itself the National Lesbian and Gay Task Force. Uh, th this will give you some index as to why uh, gay women <laughs> were angry throughout the 70s at gay men. Uh, the the uh, agenda of the task force was civil rights uh, in a traditional sense. Uh, and it could be that that's the most that could have been hoped for at that time, uh, meaning the early 80s, because it was a time of deepening economic recession, and it was also a time of deep conserv deepening conservatism. Uh, just to give you one example, the columnist George Will, who you know, is still heralded today as one of our savants, uh, he had no compunction at all about stating in the mid-'80s, uh, this effort to pass gay rights ordinances is part of the moral disarmament of society. The, the organized gay political movement in these years uh, was still marginal uh, in terms of uh, having any impact on the general culture. Uh, if the task force can be justified in its traditional approach to civil rights and in trying to shrink the boundaries, as it were, of official homophobia, uh, that still doesn't explain the absence on the task force. And I was there, so I know what kinds of discussions took place. Uh, the absence on the board of people of color. Uh, we wrangled endlessly about gender issues. Uh, and from the very first, we had one transgendered person on the board uh, long before Colette, quote, after five years of working in the movement, I've become fed up with the endless apologies and excuses for failing to deal with the absence of black faces. Pat Parker, uh, the black lesbian poet, put it more succinctly and brilliantly. She said, the white lesbian's foot might well be smaller than the white man's, but it's still on my neck. And this indictment certainly ties in with my own experience in the movement during those years, and I don't exempt myself, certainly, from criticism for not having done more uh, to make sure that all gay people were better represented. Uh, I, I do recall that in 1980, just before the epidemic uh, burst, uh, there was a white tie evening gown dinner at the Waldorf uh, in order to celebrate the presidential candidacy of Walter Mondale. Why? Because Walter Mondale had deigned to allow us to celebrate him. And the white community was absolutely agog and thrilled. Uh, Mondale's going to let us give him a testimonial. Wow. Uh, at that testimonial, I had been struck by the near total absence of people of color. And so two years later, when I was giving a speech at a Lambda Legal Defense event, uh, Lambda Legal Defense was the legal wing of the movement, which was developing in those years. I referred to the fact of the 1980 dinner, and I said that it seemed to me symbolic of the lack of representation of people of color in the agendas and personnel of our political organizations. As if in confirmation, as I was speaking, a number of gay white men, anger written all over their faces, got up and walked out in the middle of my speech. And others, I got letters from others uh, who protested what they called, and here I'm quoting one, my inappropriate and offensive remarks. <laughs>